Good day and welcome to the conference call of RS Life Sciences Limited. We have with us today on the call Mr. Amit Bakshi, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. V. Krishnakumar, Executive Director and Chief Operating Officer. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. V. Krishna Kumar, Executive Director and Chief Operating Officer. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Nirav. Uh, uh, I'm Krishna Kumar and I welcome you all to this call to discuss our latest acquisition. Before we get into the specifics of our latest deal, I wish to take a few minutes to recap the ethos of our inorganic strategy. As discussed several times in the past, the key thrust of our inorganic strategy is to leapfrog our presence in attractive therapy areas. We leveraged the Strides acquisition to enter the CNS therapy. We entered the insulin segment through an equity venture with MJ Biofarm and we entered the dermatology therapy through a series of deals starting with OakNet. We have employed a string of pearls approach in building our dermatology portfolio this year with targeted acquisitions to fill specific portfolio gaps. This approach has helped us maximize business fit and minimize redundancies. We employ a prudent screening approach to every deal that we evaluate in order to ensure evidence of early value creation opportunities, specifically in terms of number one, strategic fit with our specialty or sub-therapy requirements. Number two, the presence of arbitrage opportunities by way of fundamentally good businesses which are suboptimally run. And last but not the least, meeting our financial criteria like gross margin, growth potential, YPM, debt to EBITDA ratio, and IRR. We approach every deal with an owner-manager mindset wherein we are happy to roll up our sleeves and do the hard work to create value. This discipline has enabled us create value from deals like Strides, Zomelis, and OakNet. Starting with our inception in the year 2007, it took us nearly 13 years to add the first 1,000 crores of revenue. However, we are adding the next 1,000 crores of revenue in just four years by deploying our internal cash flows along with external funding to drive a mix of organic and inorganic growth. We have traversed the journey from 200 crores to 2,000 crores while largely preserving our gross margin at the 80% level. And we expect that this will continue to be a way of life at Eris going forward. Coming to the deal specifics, today we have announced the acquisition of nine cosmetic dermatology brands from Dr. Reddy's laboratory for a consideration of Rs. 275 crores. This portfolio includes well-known brands such as Hydroheal, Revibra, Aquaderm, Avata, and Acrofy. The brands are largely in cosmetology segments like anti-acne, moisturizers, cleansers, anti-aging, hair health, melasma, etc., and have a, com have a combined primary sales of 50 crore rupees per annum, that is 50 crore rupees per annum. This deal is in line with our stated intent of building a strong dermatology franchise. We kick-started this process with the acquisition of OakNet Healthcare for Rs. 650 crores in May 22. And we strengthened this franchise with the acquisition of nine dermatology brands from Glenmark in January of this year for Rs. 340 crores. While the Glenmark deal helped us strengthen our medical dermatology franchise, the latest deal helps us augment our cosmetic dermatology franchise. Post this deal, Eris will rank number three in its dermatology covered market with a market share of 7%. Inclusive of this deal, we have invested Rs. 1,265 crores 
in acquisitions in this financial year, primarily in building up our dermatology franchise. The aggregate revenue of the business and brands thus acquired is expected to exceed rupees 400 crores in the coming financial year FY24. This would translate into a YPM of rupees 5 lakhs for Oaknet, which is double the YPM of rupees 2.5 lakhs it had at the time of acquisition less than a year ago. Further, we know that a YPM of 5 lakhs can translate into an EBITDA margin that is very close to a corporate EBITDA margin, which is where we expect open it to be next year. This is a massive uptick from the 10% EBITDA margin which the OakNet business had at the time of acquisition. The series of deals done in this financial year has also resulted in a significant diversification of our therapeutic mix. Pre-OakNet, Eris derived 80% of its revenues from the cardiometabolic and BMN segments. Notwithstanding a 13% growth in these segments, the concentration of the cardiometabolic and VMN segments is now down to 65%. The contribution of our three emerging therapies, namely dermatology, CNS, and women's health, has increased from 12% to 28%, with dermatology having emerged as our fourth largest therapy with a 15% share in overall revenue. We expect this process of therapeutic diversification to continue as we continue to invest in our emerging therapies of insulin, dermatology, CNS, and women's health alongside our flagship cardiometabolic business. This transaction will be financed through borrowings and will achieve financial closure in the next few days. We can now open up for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The first question is from the line of Tarang Agarwal from Oldbridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, a couple of questions from me. Uh, one, uh, you know, when you say that you're 7% of the covered market in Derma and you're number three therein, if you could give us a sense in terms of how big is your covered market versus the overall Derma market, uh, what do you mean uh, when you're giving this uh, stratification? Yeah, so the concept of covered market is a very standard thing that is followed in our industry. So that is not a new uh, point. Uh, it's just uh, a term that is used to denote the particular segments of the market that we play in. So out of the total dermatology therapy, our covered market is around 45% of the total derma therapy. And so when we say we are number three with a 7% market share, we are essentially talking of that 45% footprint, which represents the molecules and the segments that we are present in. Got it. So, so yeah. at an overall level, we are maybe at 10, 11 rand. Got it. Got it. So, I mean, like for instance, if I were to understand the diabetes market, right? I mean, 12,000 crores is solid, it's about three, three and a half thousand crores in C. Right, and uh, uh, then you have sulfonurias, and you've got everything else within the twelve thousand crore. So, when you say you're forty-five percent of the covered market, are there any uh, specific subcategories within derma that you're covering, or this is just—I uh, mean, some more details into this would be helpful. 
So, okay. So, uh, I mean, please, I'm um, Amit Bakshi, this side, please pardon me. Uh, you know, we're still getting like more well words with the market. But as far as I understand, uh, so there is two part of the market, broadly, broadly speaking. One is medical dermatology, which is more about the psoriasis, the fungal infections. And the other piece is a little bit tilted on the cosmetology side. So uh, through our first two acquisitions, our medical dermatology piece has got very, uh, has got very strong. And in that particular uh, context, we were talking about number three rank, which is almost 50% of the coverage. Now, not large markets where we are not covered. So for example, the number one market in cosmetology is acne and acne care. So our presence in acne and acne care is still very small. Uh, say hair care, for example. Hair care, again, is a large market, but our presence there is, uh, is, is very small. So these are some areas we have a smaller presence. You know, emoluments, for example, one of the largest market, but we have a very small presence in that emolument market. So these brands, if you look at these brands, they are a, it's a pinhole opening for us to really build, build brands around that one brand which I have acquired to make sure that we are able to uh, you know, get a higher market share in these markets where we are not present. Got it. Got it. That's helpful. Thanks. Uh, current GCs of uh, uh, of the brands that you have acquired between Glenmark and Dr. Reddy's, would the GCs be similar to Oaknet? Yeah, they are similar to Oaknet. We are in the same vicinity of 78 to 80 percent. Okay, and uh, my sense is uh, these products could be manufactured uh, internally, whether in Sikkim or Gujarat, right? Yeah, so we are we are evaluating that because as of now, all most of these products are done by third parties. But given that we have put together a fairly sizable derma basket now, we are evaluating the business case to manufacture these products in a Gujarat plant. So we should we should have some update on that the next time we meet up. Sure. And the last is going to be hundred percent debt funded. If so, what's the cost of funding that you're looking at? Will it be fixed or variable? It is variable in the range of 8 to 8.5%. Eight okay. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Lano Prakash from Access Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Uh, just trying to understand, you know, uh, so we, we have been fairly aggressive, uh, especially in the derm side, and getting, uh, you know, getting the fair share of the market now. So uh, you said that there is a white space of acne in, within the derm. Uh, so uh, we would uh, still be open uh, to looking at more assets. Yeah, Prakash makes sense, no? If we if we get something which will fill the gap. So uh, there are two answers to this, Prakash. One is that you know now it's time for us to consolidate, right? We've got three uh, you know uh, acquisitions in a year. So we uh, clearly believe that now it's the execution time, the consolidation time. So are we ready to do something big in Dharma? The answer is a clear no. But if there is something which is you know, useful and still in that range which gives us comfort, uh, we are still open to that. Okay, and I, maybe I missed this, but the MRs, we are just the brand, right? So is it fair to say that you know the MRs which came from Oaknet but they were medical derma and uh, you know other uh, so uh, these are enough uh, MRs or you would need more uh, specialized uh, MR for cosmetic derma marketing. So uh, we are adding uh, what we have done is this some amount of redistribution of people which we have done. We are, we are adding one more uh, division which will be primarily cosmetology, and we are hiring fifty people from outside. Rest 50 of them have been moved from inside from the various divisions. Now, between Dharma and Cosmo, you know what happens, uh, Prakash? You know it's not such a such a thin such a thick line when you do a presentation in front of a promotion in front of a doctor. It's more about training and understanding the product. So I think the team uh, at Oaknet is a very good team at the management level at the marketing level, and you know they have had some very good successes in the recent past also. So that I'm not worried from that point of view. Okay, and, uh, and I may just add to that. Uh, yes. So the the expansion in the field force is to the tune of 40-50 reps, like Amit mentioned, and the existing field force 
that handles dermite open it is about 640 so it's it's really a very incremental expansion that we are looking at so your earlier point that these brands that have come from glenmark as well as reddies are pure brand deals with very high gcs so it gives us a very good arbitrage arbitrage potential in terms of you know scaling up the ypm of the business and hence also the margins of oknet okay understood and uh, so from a margin perspective uh, it would be fair to understand that uh, there is a lot of headroom but currently it would be much below than the company average and there is a potential to move to the company average is what you are saying it is far better than a potential prakash it's pretty much a done deal because uh, this year we have been saying that our uh, oknet ebitda margin for the year will be around 25% but once we put all of this together as i mentioned earlier our ypm will be 5 lakhs per you know month right from 1st april so that means that we have we have clear line of sight on a ebitda margin which is in the range of 36 to 38% for next year it's not a potential there is clear line of sight yeah yeah correct okay and this we are saying for the full basket of the oknet the glenmark and the uh, the recent one dr reddies yeah we are looking at the entire basket to be north of 400 crores in revenue next year with an ebitda margin in the range that i highlighted to you okay so one more last question if i may so uh, we we said that we are fairly open to the acne and it makes sense to cover the entire dog market uh, uh, just trying to understand you know why spaces in cardio metabolic tools to that as well sorry to say that again so acne you mentioned that clearly you will be interested uh, in complete the you know dog franchise but uh, in the cardio metabolic which has been our key you know uh, key segment uh, are there any white spaces and would you be interested uh, in any so because i can't number one i can't see many where we are sitting at this point of time and second historically it has always been you know a difficult thing to hunt for so right now in our minds we do not we do not have a sight of you know getting into something in cardio diabetes which is significantly uh, you know big mm. so again it goes back to the covered market uh, ratio right okay. yeah sorry we missed you kk yeah no no that's fine so i was just saying that our presence in cardio metabolic is pretty expansive so hence the probability of finding white spaces is limited to that extent okay fair enough thank you thank you thank you the next question is from line of tarun chetty from hightong securities please go ahead um hi thank you for the opportunity i just have one question uh, what, what would be the primary sales growth for this portfolio as in nata 22 and what would be the sales year to date so the primary sale this year was to the tune of 50 crores that's uh, that's the number and the the kegar over the last two years has been around 8% and this is despite the fact that uh, these brands were uh, you know despite being very strong brands they were not promoted uh, but in our hands you know when we look at the kind of focus and go to market that we are bringing creating a new division and you know provide focus on these brands we believe that you know a 15 to 20% kind of a growth in the first 3 years is a doable proposition okay there's a clarification there that by 50 crore this year you mean year to date fi 23 or fi 22 year ending march 23 okay yeah that's it for me thank you thank you The next question is from Lana of Arthi Rao from Anbati. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, sir, I just missed out on the brand names uh, that was disclosed, and any uh, top two or top three brands that crosses uh, over ten or twenty crores. Uh, I can hear a slight echo from the management line. Parasaban, please stay connected while we rejoin the management line back to the call.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. We have the line for the management reconnection. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah perfect. Uh, so I had questions regarding the brands that you disclosed. Uh, what are those nine brands and any uh, any brand that uh, probably clocks more than 10 or 20 crores single-handed? Yes, there are brand names. Uh, the, the key brands are Acrofy, Aquaderm, Avata, Hydro Heal, Revibra. So these are some of the key brands. In terms of uh, revenues, there are at least three brands in this portfolio which are, you know, north of 10 crores. And there are a couple in the 20 crore bracket. In terms of uh, leadership positions, three of these brands are ranked among the top three in their respective segments. And there are another three of these brands which are ranked among the top five in their respective segments. So six out of nine brands have some kind of a leadership position. Okay. And my next question is, um, what kind of growth the cosmetic uh, uh, derma segment would be growing on an IPM basis? So the entire derma segment has a growth of about 10-11%. Cosmetic derm is growing slightly faster than the average. Okay, and do we expect uh, the, the drugs that we've acquired, I mean the brands that we've acquired would grow uh, better than the industry rate? Yes, that is the expectation. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, once once we are able to, you know, take the brands in and they get settled down within our system, uh, 15 to 20 percent per annum kind of growth is what we can expect. Okay, thanks. That's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Barak Thakkar from Annual Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity. Uh, so basically, uh, now uh, what will be the total net debt position? After the at, the end, at the end of March, we'll be at around 850 crores of debt. Oh, oh, oh. And our EBITDA will be in the vicinity of what, 600 crores? So, yeah, so from a net debt to EBITDA standpoint, we expect we should be at around one, one and a half times this year, which will obviously significantly reduce when we look at what numbers, you know, we are looking at for next year. Okay. So you are, so any, any upside gap, we can expect that uh, if suppose something uh, else also comes up for acquisition, uh, what kind of upside gap we can, we have in our mind for uh, Net debt to EBITDA number? So we'll be comfortable. See, the banks require you to, you know, stick to three times. Uh, so we'll be comfortable holding the two, 2x mark. That's, you know, kind of the internal benchmark that we have for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. From shareholder perspective, uh, I would also recommend that only, that not to cross beyond two. Uh, also, also, your scalability and your uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the way you have turned around Okanet and your margins have improved, that tells uh, that tells us about your uh, capability to uh, to uh, I would to shore up the margins. But uh, then too, uh, I think net debt to EBITDA of about two x will be slightly more uh, dangerous. So uh, that is our suggestion also. And uh, the other thing is that. In all these brands, in all, so basically, you expect all the entire 400 crore to go up to your 36, 38 percent margin, which you said, right? Yeah, and this that is, is right. 24 or 25? 24. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are saying 140 crore EBITDA, and uh, you are, you'll have a debt of 800 crore, which you have taken at 8.5 percent. So 70 crore will be the interest cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, and what what growth we should expect from our organic business? So we can come back to you on that uh, because we'll be meeting you again in you know seven eight weeks when we talk about our results. So we'll give you a completely you know comprehensive picture about the next year. Okay. And any any payout, division payout, any dividend payout kind of thing in your mind, uh, which after all this, because we will be the first priority will be to reduce debt, right? 
So as I said, all of this stuff we'll pick up, you know, when we come to talk to you about the year-end results. Right now, right now, you know, we'll we'd like to focus more about uh, dermatology and open it. Thank you, and sorry to interrupt you, Pangar. I'll request you to join the queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Ashan Nair from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, just uh, wanted to clarify uh, a couple of things. So, firstly, um, the incremental spend for you on these products would be the 50 MRs and uh, additional sales promotion activity that you would have to do, right? Is that the right way to look at it? Yes, Prashant, that's right. Okay, fair enough. And uh, typically, when you acquire such brands, uh, so where, which which have not been core to the sellers, uh, how how can you see how much do you have to step up uh, intensity? Uh, you know, related to what you would be normally doing in in a, in a product of yours. Uh, is it? Uh, I mean, is there any sense uh, you can give which helps us understand? Uh, you know, what the the upfront outlays. Yeah, Prashant, so generally if you ask us, you know, we find it a little convenient to say tail brands and you know all those things. But when you when we look at the brand from a personality point of view and what is the kind of uh, you know image it has in the in in, in front of the HCTs. So all these brands which we are talking about and also uh, the Glenmark brands, they really stand out. You know, the owner bed, the handovet of the world, the sorbet of the world are really leaders in their own uh, you know, in their own therapies. Now, what happens over a period of time when you when you have a very large basket, you can't help but you know it it comes into some kind of a chronological order. So, when it comes into a fresh, you know, when it comes to some fresh hands, you know, the energy all of a sudden increases. And because you know we uh, there is a lot, there are a lot of therapy gaps available in the acquirer in case of us the focus and the energy increases very, very rapidly. And just the fact then when a brand is promoted as number four and when it is promoted as number one or two makes a very, makes, makes a significant difference. So what we will see, I mean, take Oaknet, let's not uh, talk about what, is, what will happen to these brands, take Oaknet for an example. So it is just about the energy, the, you know, uh, you know the positioning of the brands and that's how the whole difference is made. So, in our plan, we have a very fresh and uh, energetic way to look into these brands at in the different therapies, and I believe that energy gives a, gives it a fillip for growth. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks for that. And then just one more clarification. Uh, so, KK, when you mentioned the uh, revenue number for a few of these brands, uh, so north of ten crore, couple which are in the twenty crore bracket, these are at uh, uh, AVAX level, right? Or are these primary? Yeah, so these are these are AVAX these are AVAX number, and some of them are definitely exaggerated also. But what we what uh, I think offline people can tell you uh, exactly what is what are the brands uh, size. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thank you. That's it for me. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Nayarika from Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. So, considering the cost of acquisition of 275 crores and uh, the turnover of around 50 crores, so we have given it a value of around upwards of like 5.5 crores. So, you must have done some market research. So, according to you, what justifies this high value which you have uh, given for it? And what revenue potential does this portfolio hold, say, next three, four years based on your uh, research and yeah, so that's a nice question. So, you know, as you have been alluding to, that cosmetology is a little premium to dermatology, and the growth also in the last five years has always ebbed the dermatology growth. So, cosmetology as a segment is a little more little more revered than dermatology. That's number one. Then you look at what is the category you're looking at. So, say a product like an aquaderm which is like five seven crore rupees revenue if i'm not uh, if i'm not wrong but the category is emolument and it is the perception on that category has been very nice so we do run this perception analysis among the hcp uh, brand wise just to see how the brand is positioned in their head so because number one it is cosmetology number two it is ticking the right boxes as far as the therapy is concerned and 
historically cosmetology has been little more revered and growth has also been better than dermatology that put together makes that premium the zero goes along okay and any revenue potential that you must have uh, kind of assessed in the next 4 years 5 years or on a long term basis that this nine bands can go up to this level from 50 crores to say some number so we have look 15 to 20% growth in these products just because they are early uh, you know they are early brands and the sizes are all and the average size is between you know 8 5 to 9 crores therefore we find the headroom is quite good So we assume a 15 to 20 percent growth over the next four years. Okay, that will help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Harshal Patel from Mira Asset. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, just had one question to ask you. Uh, basically, this was with respect to the margins for Oaknet. Uh, sir, if we see the quarterly Q3 uh, margins as of December quarter, I guess Oaknet was at around 27 percent, and uh, uh, right now we are expecting about 25 percent uh, for FY24. So, sir, am I missing something out here? Uh, yeah so i mentioned that 25% would be the margin for this year that is fy23 full year approximately okay okay got it the margin for 24 will be in the range of 36 to 38% okay 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 thank you thank you sir thank you for that and sir uh, the levers would effectively be the ramp up in the portfolio of the uh, that's glenmark plus opnet plus uh, dr eddy's portfolio Yeah, so leverage ramp up will always be a leverage. But uh, what is important here when you get brands and you make them sit on the same people, that is where the whole you know uh, the productivity thing kicks kicks in. And at a thumb rule level, if you are in the vicinity of seventy eight eighty percent gross margins and are hitting a five lakh close to five lakh kind of a YPM, then these kind of margins. So you know when I'm we are when we are giving you these numbers, we are really not incorporated. Uh, you know. Uh, substantial growth, uh, you know, uh, in the whole OPNET system. We are we are giving you a very you know nominal kind of a growth because you know we have to just get things together. But it's just the function of a five lakh productivity and a huge gross margin between seventy eight to eighty percent. So largely, if these two things are there, you know, the EBITDA margins will fall in between that thirty six to forty percent. क्वेश्चन प्लीज Shalab, if you can hear us, may I request you to unmute your line from your side and go ahead with the question, please. Need to know response. We move to the next participant. Next follow-up question is from the line of Tarang Agarwal from Moldbridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, just wanted to check. Uh, you know, you mentioned that you're number three in the covered market for Derma. Would the the top two players be the same players who are the leaders in overall derma therapy for this covered market as well? GSK in this particular case for the covered GSK market. GSK is ahead. They, 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 yeah, they are ahead of us. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Next question is from Lanav Ayush from Mal from Clearview Capital. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. I think a key part of our strategy to show the gross margin is to ultimately uh, make these products in-house, these acquired brands in-house. Uh, just wanted to check what is the maximum turnover that we can generate out of the 300 crore odd gross block that we have currently, and whether there will be an imminent need for you know creating new capacity going forward if we were to insure these products. so i'll answer those two questions one by one so the potential for fixed asset turnover in our industry is very high uh, like we are seeing a fixed asset turnover of more than 10 times for our second plant so we expect you should see at least that if not more for the new facility uh, in terms of bringing the derma operations in house that is actively being evaluated uh, 
it will require so at present our second facility is configured for oral solid dose and injectables not for derma so if we do bring uh, these products in house there will be some incremental investment uh, you know which we can quantify uh, as soon as we make that decision but your point is right that there will definitely be an arbitrage in terms of improvement in gross margin if they are brought in house and if am i wrong in saying that we will not need any land and building it because the blocks are already we already have blocks in place so it will all be plant and machinery yes so it won't be civil no utilities got it any timeline that we have in mind to build these brand rooms that we evaluated right now we haven't crystallized on anything but uh, the next time we uh, have a chat i'm sure we'll have some kind of an update got it and and including yeah. this time what is the percentage of uh, products that that are manufactured through third party if i can get that number from you was this question for the derma portfolio or for uh, company as a whole the company as a whole third party percentage is 15 to 20% Got it. Thank you. That's all. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We will take that as the last question. On behalf of Eris Life Sciences, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.